People come to Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts in the summer to play on the beach, attend parties, and relax in seaside homes. They also come to eat fresh seafood. Bay scallops, a creamy, bite-sized animal, are often on the menu. Before they arrive on people's plates, bay scallops live in lush eelgrass meadows and coastal ponds around the island. This summer, I discovered something rather scary growing on the eelgrass next to the scallops, rubbery animals called sea squirts. Some are brown, others yellow or orange. Though colorful, they aren't very pretty. Kids often call them alien vomit. All this orange business here, and I don't see any other species around here right now. I know from 10 years of research around New England that they like to grow on hard surfaces like rocks, moorings, or boat bottoms. Sea squirts feed on algae and bacteria using one siphon to suck in water and another siphon to squirt it out, hence their name. They are also called tunicates, a name derived from the firm, rubbery outer layer called a tunic. They are expensive and time-consuming to clean up and can crowd out native species of plants and animals. So when I saw them on eelgrass, I grew nervous about what harm they could do to the grass, scallops, and other marine organisms, and I started investigating. Okay, I want you to kind of notice how there really is not a lot of shoreline development in here, that there really aren't very many floating docks at all. There's no marina, there's no harbor. There's no obvious major source of tunicates, like on an infested harbor that we're so used to seeing in other areas around the Cape and this island. Six of nine species of sea squirt living in New England aren't native to the area. They came here from Europe and Asia, and they aren't welcome guests. My goal is to map the spread of sea squirts on Martha's Vineyard. This summer, I gathered a group of volunteers to figure out how much they have spread on the island. Where do you want to start? You want to start over there? I, I guess just kind of in the middle and okay. where it's good to get, jump in the water. So far, I found them colonizing eelgrass in two places on the island, Senegatacket Pond and Lake Tasmu. To map the spread, I relied on volunteer support, including several people from the town of Oak Bluff's shellfish department my 16-year-old daughter Mimi, an underwater photographer, and even a concerned local fisherman. We spent several weeks this summer diving with GPS units and cameras to take a closer look. That's how the word violations is start to overgrow that scallop. That small juvenile scallop yep. is attaching to the eelgrass like it should. But there's the tunicate. Right on its starting tail, to huh? overgrow the scallop. That's not good. Sea squirts take over new areas in several ways. Some travel from affected areas by clinging to boat bottoms or aquaculture gear. Others go from place to place by clinging to a piece of wood, plastic bottle, or a blade of eelgrass. That presents a tough management challenge. How do we stop every blade of sea squirt-coated grass from drifting into a new area? And on Martha's Vineyard, with so many connected waterways, it is easy to imagine how they could move and settle into new areas. This podcast is a production of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. For more information, visit us on the web at www.whoi.edu.